Hey guys, I'm Dustin. And I'm Burton. And today we are talking about surrogacy. surrogacy. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> people are always wanting to know our surrogacy process or how we had kids. And so we thought this would be a good opportunity to share our story for some of you that are interested in doing this, or even if you're just curious about this process. Right, when we started our journey, I know we were very overwhelmed looking at all the various options out there, whether it was uh, fostering, adoption, and, and surrogacy. Yeah, we wish that we had some guidance and some help during this time right. that we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do. And there's lots of things that can help you guys during this process. One, hearing people's stories like ours. Also, there's even things like the One in Four app. If you're not familiar with it, it's an awesome, Kind of community application that allows you to learn about surrogacy processes, fostering, uh, adoption, and even builds a community so that people can pick each other's brains and share their stories and really learning from communities as opposed to like one agency or something like that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go on. So at the time we started our journey, marriage equality had uh, had just passed and we were dealing with, with HB2 at the same time. So our state yeah. really was not that progressive. Also, as we were navigating through this process, we heard that from a lot of people that have experienced this, fostering and adoption could take you know, one to five or six Long years time. or whatever. Right. And we were both very eager to kind of get the ball rolling, even though we knew surrogacy was super expensive. And I know for, for me, I work for a, a large company who, um, who actually offers benefits, right? They offer services that help you make decisions, whether it is uh, fostering, adoption, or surrogacy. Um, what also was a benefit is that some large companies even offer um, reimbursement for, for cost um, for fostering adoption and surrogacy as well. So we were able to leverage that um, as part of this process, which was amazing. Which is a huge help, right. yeah. When we were just actually looking and trying to get information, we went to a fertility clinic here in North Carolina. It's called uh, Carolina Conceptions. And we didn't even realize how lucky we were to, to land on that clinic for right. the, as our as like first step, just because they really did everything. It's basically a one-stop shop. Yeah, I mean, they had a listserv of egg donors, they had a listserv of people that were willing to carry, like gestational carriers, and uh, they even helped you know, map out what lawyers to use and yeah. all those things. So we felt very fortunate, and that's why you know not every clinic's like that, and we just happened to be lucky enough to stumble across one that did these things. And after talking to them, we went home kind of like, I think we're, this was the path for us. Right. I think it felt like, you know, it this, felt right. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was the time. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But what we learned through this, I always heard the word surrogate and just assumed that was like what everyone did if you had someone, you know, carry your kid. But actually like surrogate means it's someone who's using their own egg. Now, if you're using a separate donor egg and having someone else carry, that person's called a gestational carrier, which is actually what we decided to go with. Right. And mainly because like in North Carolina, and depending on where you live, it really helps kind of protect you as parents of that child. Because, you know, if someone's using their own egg, in certain states, it could they could have Parental, you know, parental rights, rights to the child, yeah. yeah. So as we started to learn more about the gestational process, um, we, we actually left the clinic that day and went direct, straight home. They gave us access to their database to begin looking for uh, for egg donors. Yeah, so we decided to, to go online dating for <laughs> egg donors. <laughs> and that's really what it was like. It's what? like this data bank where you go through and you're looking at profiles and reading about them. Uh, it talks about their health history, their interests, um, everything. It truly even is like- Their family health history too. I mean, it goes through, um, you know, they even go through a psych evaluation before for, before doing this as, as, as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, and I remember that night very clearly because we sat down at the counter and I remember scrolling through and I zoomed in on this one this one egg donor. I was like, oh, she's the one, she's the one. And of course my practical no, no, husband. No, we, we have to go through every single one of them, <laughs> look at the pictures, read the health profile, create an Excel spreadsheet to compare. And I was like, no, nope, I'm good. I, I, that's the one. And so I, I totally played his game and I allowed him to like, 
Let's look through every single profile yeah. while I'm internally freaking out. Cause I'm like, no, we gotta, we gotta tell them now. She's the one. Like, what if someone grabs this person while we're looking and reading through thousands of bios? Yeah. But, um, but we ended up actually going back to her, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We settled on her and uh, within, I guess it, that was probably a Friday. We didn't settle on her. He wanted it her too. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> I mean, we, cho we chose her, but yeah. you know, that was a Friday. On Monday, we, uh, we put a deposit on, on her. Yeah, yeah. On, on the on eggs. eggs. Yeah, this is like- It sounds, yeah. yeah. It's, but this strange, is but that's science. the process, right? right. <laughs> Looking for a gestational carrier, however, was a was a completely different experience. I mean, we interviewed <laughs> dozens and dozens of candidates. Yeah, we did. But it's, imagine this: it's like it's like going on the most awkward blind date, you know. Except your date shows up with their husband and kids, because <laughs> <laughs> every gestational carrier that we interviewed, they were you know they've had Most children before. They're married, they're married. had kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're so grateful that there is these selfless, amazing people out there. But you know, I think this is the time that you really have to listen to your gut. Absolutely. It, you know, your instinct has to really kick in because this is the person that's going to be carrying your kids and you're going to be, you know, having this relationship with them and it has to really, really work. But I mean, and when we met our decisional carrier, the one, yeah, we knew right off the bat. Right? Yeah, we, we 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 met her. I mean, in a, in a, in a new, neutral location, but we she was there with her kids and her husband, and immediately we uh, we could tell it was a, a, a overwhelming love from not only her but her husband and her kids, and it just it just clicked, right? It was yeah. kind of like it, it just felt right. And when I remember right. her walking away, and we were like, okay, that, this, absolutely, this is she is the one. Yeah, right? things don't always just fall into place because we actually had picked another girl to do to be our gestational carrier. And she went through the psych evaluation and it just didn't work out. And we were devastated about it and thinking, you know, but we also, you know, didn't trust our instincts because there were some things that we just were kind of wrestling with. And I think that we were just uh, thinking that this would be an impossible feat. But what we learned from this is no, you just have to really wait until it's right. Yeah. Don't you agree? Don't rush the process. Yeah. Right. There are so many moments that might take more time than you think. You know, retrieving of the eggs, finding a gestational carrier, trying to find an egg donor. We, it happened for us fairly quickly, but it might take you longer and that's okay. Right, and there's also different cycles because of this, right? Some egg donors may not be available at that point in time because they're they're donating for some other couple. And so you might need to wait another nine weeks or so for them to actually, um, for them to, to cycle back around. So yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of waiting and giving and taking yeah. uh, throughout this process. Which is probably why, you know, no two people have the same surrogacy story, really. Right. We were fortunate that our gestational carrier lived in the same city as us. So we were able to kind of go to all the doctor's appointments and we would bring our groceries. Right. For, we, just, we were like, eat all these fruits and vegetables, even though she ate healthy already. Yeah, it, was, it was more than that too. We wanted, we wanted her to be happy and healthy and we knew that that, uh, you know, that meant us caring for her during this entire process. So, you know, instead of having just one man dote over you, it was, Three, yeah, three, three. three. <laughs> her husband was involved in it as well. Yeah, yeah, and we still are very close to them. Um, you know, they have been at our children's birthday parties every year. Right. Um, you know, the gift that they gave us is the most precious gift, and so this most selfless gift that anyone could ever do. Right. So, always grateful for them. Yeah. yeah. So thank you if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> So when we retrieve the eggs from the egg donor, um, she actually goes through hormone treatments, which allows her to produce a lot of eggs at one time. So we we're able to get a lot of uh, viable eggs for for our process, yeah. at, le at least at least ten or so, right? Um, so what we did was we took half of the eggs and fertilized them with my DNA, and half of them and fertilized with Dustin's DNA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and, and, and at that time, uh, the doctors were telling us that if we implanted uh, two eggs, we were going to get one baby. All right, and the standard was no more than two right. at the time. Yeah. So we put two in, and we were like, fingers crossed. Like, it would be amazing if they both took, but we were thinking only one's probably going right. to take. We were going to let a higher power choose which <laughs> one took, and, right. uh, and we, we would figure it out. And then we would go back, because we, uh, we still had other eggs that were fertilize and that we were going to freeze and so that if one of us were able to have a biological kid then we can go back and um and have the next one yeah the next go around yeah, yeah. 
So that very first time that we went to the ultrasound, do you remember that? Like when oh, we absolutely. found, yeah. do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Like I, like I couldn't sleep the night before. I knew we were having our first ultrasound, right. and I remember going in, and they were like, they hear like two heartbeats, yeah. and we were just beside ourselves. Well, leading up to this, so we had we implanted the eggs. Uh, then they did actually a, a blood test, and they were able to. They had some markers there, and um, you know, I don't know all of the things, but they they were saying it's looking really good. So we were really excited to, to, to walk in the door there. Yeah, um, looking good as in they knew that we were pregnant. Yeah. But we didn't know pre pregnant with- How pregnant? One, two, <laughs> did they split? Did we, were we having yeah. four? Like, <laughs> so. And the yeah. ul ultrasound was, was pretty amazing, right? So when they first, as they're moving around, trying to, sh to, to figure out where the babies are, they can hear, they can hear a, a heartbeat at first. And, right. and they were able to see on the screen and what it, what it actually looked like was like a little, uh, a little a diamond ring, right? It's yeah. a little circle. It just um, fluttered. And then you saw like this little beat right on top, which was amazing. And so we were beside ourselves when we saw the first little heartbeat. And then the doctor smiled as she moved around and said, uh, said, I see another we one. We are able to take, <laughs> somehow they, they figured out the picture to be able to take both of them at the same time. Yeah. Um, which was so cool. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So what you might find is, you know, sometimes when, depending on who you're working with, you might not have a gestational carrier or a surrogate that even lives in your area. Like we know lots of couples that you know, they met with them like right in the very beginning and then they didn't see them until the very, yeah, like when they were in delivery. Right, right. some of them live across the entire country, so. Yeah, so it really just depends on, you know, the path that you're taking. And we just happened to follow this path where our gestational care was local, which is awesome. That whole process was really unique and neat because we got to experience the whole pregnancy process along with her, which not everyone gets to do. So I do feel very fortunate that we were able to do that with her. Right. Every ultrasound, every every doctor's appointment, which is amazing, getting to talk to her belly is, uh, you know, so they, the babies could, could hear your voice is, yeah. is a really, um, uh, you know, I will, an experience I will never forget. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's beautiful. And when her water broke early, you know, our kids came at seven and a half weeks early and her water broke two weeks before that. Now, I know we had chatted about that in our introductory video, but you know, being that we were so close to her, it was awesome because we were able to get to the hospital and be there by her side during that whole process, I know, which yeah. is amazing. For me, I can work remotely, so I was working from the hospital every day along with her. Yeah. Um, we were able to make her, her because hospital food is hospital food. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I was cooking her like every yeah. meal and bringing it to the hospital. Right. <laughs> we, were, we were just hands on sure. as much as if our spouse was the one giving birth. Right. Which. It's not the same, I know, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Since we had our kids, like the norm has changed in how they do fertility. So we were fortunate to kind of make the cut where they implanted two because now the norm is they actually only will implant one because right. I think the science has gotten so good. Put one in and the chances are you're gonna have a baby, right? Maybe. Right? Yeah. So if you put two in, you're gonna get two. <laughs> <laughs> or, or our friends that just recently had triplets because right. they put two in and then one split, so now they have triplets, which, God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of ways of having kids, you know, adoption, uh, fostering, surrogacy, and it really just matters on what route you wanna take. And I know it can be overwhelming, and we feel very lucky that we fell into place in a perfect situation with meeting this amazing fertility clinic that helped us. Um, but what would you do if you're interested and you live clear across the country or, you know, live in another country? And that's also why we thought the one in four app would be a really great resource is because they do have a community board. So it's like a sounding board, kind of like what we're doing with you guys just about this topic, but they have so much more. Yeah, and, articles, yeah. many stories, influencer blogs. Yeah, all of that stuff. So it's a really great raw resource uh, coming from actual people that have walked through this and so that you know what's available to you. Right. Yeah. So basically this video times a gazillion. Right. It's been unlimited, <laughs> unlimited people talking about their stories. Right. Yeah. So again, some of the things to, to think about. Um, you can go with an agency. Um, they're gonna do, it's gonna be a little more expensive and they will do a little more hand-holding through the process or you can go the clinic route like we did and it's can, you're gonna be doing a little more legwork. But there are some things to, to, to keep in mind through this entire process. Um, health insurance is, is one of those and that's health insurance for yourself and also for uh, for the person carrying the baby. So you want to have uh, those things set up properly for the year the baby's going to be going to be born. 
Um, also, some other things are financial assistance. I know for ours, our IVF clinic offer financial assistance during this time. Um, so you can even find those, those options out as well. And um, uh, legal services, that's something that we always need to, to, to think about. And especially when you're going down the path of a gestational carrier, there's gonna be separate contracts signed with, uh, with her. And so you're gonna need to have a good uh, lawyer, um, especially one that focuses on, on family law. And depending on uh, whatever state you're in, you probably wanna go, go with somebody, an LGBT friendly lawyer, an advocate for your, um, you know, for, for your state or region. Yeah. Someone who knows the, the laws and the context around those laws. Um, specifically for your type of family. I do feel so lucky that looking at our kids, I have a piece of him and he has a piece of me. And yet a lot of people want to know, they're like, whose is who? Yeah. And we're always like, they're both ours. And we actually don't know for sure. Technically we don't. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, I mean, we have our suspicions. We right. we know, <laughs> we know, yeah. but we don't know. We don't know yeah. technically. And what's really special too is to be able to see attributes of your partner yeah. In a child, it's it's, ma really cool. it's magical, and it's also the sweetest thing. It makes me fall in love with him more and more. Yeah, but we'll never tell uh, who we're looking at when we right? say that. See how careful I was to <laughs> just, just dance around. <laughs> What's so incredible is through this experience, even though one is my DNA and one is Burton's DNA, like they are both ours. Yeah, like our that is like him. my daughter. That is my son. And that really shows you, like, it doesn't matter if you're adopting, if you're fostering, if you're doing a surrogacy, whose egg it, it is, whose right. sperm it is, it does not matter. The when that child is, endless. is yours, yeah. it's yours. Absolutely. This is baby A. This is Holland. That's Holland and this baby B. Yeah, that's he's, stone. He's, he's covering his ears. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, he's like, like, shut up, man. Yeah, I'm trying to sleep. Like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty much it in a nutshell. That's our surrogacy story. And um, we try to condense it as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of other details, but if you have questions, don't be afraid to put comments down below. Down below. Yeah. We'll ask us. Yeah. yeah. And if we don't know, maybe we can, you know, resource that out or you can check out that one in four app, which yep. is filled with knowledge that we might not have, so. We wish we had it. Yeah. <laughs> we really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the social love. Bye. Bye. Alright, Dad. Hi. We're on the way. First car ride home with the babies. Looks like Tahoe's are the, the, the car, choice. No car of choice to take home babies because there's four lined up. <laughs> Today's the day. <laughs> take, take babies home. I know, Bear. It's okay. We're going home.